Um, but again, thank you so much for joining us today. And I have to ask, we watched you get your COVID-19 vaccine live on television Friday morning. How are you feeling now? I feel great. And uh, my mother-in-law, my mother had been texting me all weekend asking me, uh, do I feel okay? My uncle asked me if I grew another head. No, I feel fine. I have a little bit of a sore arm, which is normal for a few days after the shot that happened after my flu shot, but I didn't have any side effects. I do want people to know you can have a little bit of a mild fever, a little bit of a headache after you get your shot, and that's just your body doing what it's supposed to be doing, and that's forming antibodies to, uh, to the vaccine, but I didn't have any of those uh, uh, issues and I actually uh, just want people to know that I've looked at the data. I've been involved with the studies. Uh, I know that this technology has been around for over a decade. It's not as new as people say it is. And that's why I felt safe getting the shot. But I wanted to walk the talk because too many people of color in particular have concerns about this vaccine. And it's okay to have questions. It's not okay to let misinformation lead you into making a bad decision for your health. Surgeon General, let's talk about that because there is a lot of skepticism around this vaccine. A lot of people questioning how quickly it came about. Um, just explain why you are so confident in this process. Well, number one, I'm confident because one of the lead scientists who developed it is an African-American female named Dr. Corbett who works at NIH. I'm confident because the people who review it uh, on the Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices at the CDC and the Verb Pack at the FDA Many of them are people of color. And I'm confident because I've worked along with Dr. Fauci to make sure we have robust enrollment in the trials. And so we have good representation of African-Americans and of Latinos in the trials. So this was developed by, reviewed by, and tested uh, in, in populations of color. And so I feel confident getting this vaccine. But another important point is this, this virus has disproportionately hit communities of color. And we have a tool that is 95% effective. We set the bar originally at 50% effectiveness. This is 95%. That means if you get the vaccine, there is almost a 100% chance that you will not have a severe negative outcome. And that's not something that I want people to be deprived of because of misinformation or mistrust. Absolutely. So we've started out, I was in a hospital last week covering our frontline medical workers getting that vaccine. They were thrilled. They were so happy. Um, we do know that those medical workers are getting them now. Who's going to be the next group of people that will have access to this vaccine? Uh, our whole mantra is to immunize for impact. And we know that 40% of the deaths are occurring in 0.4% of the population people in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. So we wanna make sure we're immunizing those people because they are most likely to end up in the hospital and die. We also wanna make sure we are immunizing healthcare workers, as you mentioned, because they are most likely to be exposed. But there's a little nuance there. It's important people know that the healthcare workers most likely to be exposed aren't the doctors and the nurses, they're actually the sanitation workers, the techs, the aides who are disproportionately people of color. So we need to make sure even within these tiers, we're paying attention to the disparities that exist. The uh, uh, CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices said next should be people not in long-term care facilities or nursing homes, but over the age of 75, along with essential health workers like prison workers, like teachers, like police officers and firefighters. And we expect 100 million doses by the end of February. And uh, I, we honestly are on track to have the entire adult population vaccinated by this summer. Are you optimistic that will happen? Well, again, I'm hopeful. We always want to under-promise and over-deliver. But, uh, but what I would say is based just on the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines right now and what they're telling us, we could have the entire adult population vaccinated by summer. And that's not including the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca vaccines if they make it across the finish line. We're hearing about this new strain of COVID in England. Is this something that's on your radar that you're concerned about? And do you think the vaccine will be efficient to that? Great question. Everyone's talking about it. It has actually not um, been confirmed to be a new strain yet. It's a new variant. And what I want people to know is viruses mutate all the time. This uh, SARS-CoV-2, the, the virus that causes COVID, has already mutated uh, dozens of times so far this year. A mutation doesn't mean that the virus becomes more deadly or more contagious. And even for uh, this variant that we found in the UK, it may not actually be more contagious. It may just be that it was a variant that was involved in a super spreader event. So here's what the people need to know. 
we're working with the WHO, with the uh, UK, uh, the CDC, and others to find out as much as we can, as quickly as we can about this new variant. But it doesn't change what we've been telling you. It actually underscores what we've been telling you, that it's incredibly important that we wash our hands, we wear our masks, we watch our distance, we keep our household gatherings small, especially this holiday season, because a vaccine is here and there's no indication yet that this new variant will, will be uh, resistant to this vaccine. But even if it is in the long run, I want people to also understand that happens with the flu every year. Okay. So it just means that now we have the technology, we tweak the vaccine a little bit, and we keep on going. We have a finish line in sight. We've just got to run through it. I'm going to ask you one more question about the vaccines, then we're going to move on to Christmas safety. My last question, to people that have had COVID, for example, the president has had COVID within the last few months, do they need to get this vaccine as well? Yes, we absolutely recommend people who've had COVID get the vaccine because the antibodies in the lab only last about three months. So we don't know if you'll get long lasting protection simply from being infected. I want people to understand the reason the president hasn't gotten vaccinated yet, and I've confirmed this with his own doctors, is because he actually was treated with monoclonal antibodies. So it's not that he had COVID, it's the treatment that he got the FDA recommends you wait 90 days before you get vaccinated. So uh, the president's a supporter of vaccines. The vice president and I got vaccinated last Friday, and I want the people out there to get the facts so they can make an informed decision for their health. I did, and I got vaccinated. Really, really good information. Thank you for clarifying that. So let's talk about Christmas and New Year's coming up here. Uh, people may be traveling. People may be seeing their families. You're urging people not to do that. But what do you want people to know as we head into this holiday season? Thanksgiving, how is it looking from that? Are you able to tell the numbers? Did you see a spike? What are you thinking? Well, we saw a spike in some places, and those places where we saw the biggest spikes are places where people uh, were less likely to follow the guidelines. Uh, here's what people need to know about uh, safety over the holidays. The safest way to spend the holiday season is with the immediate members of your household. And I know it's painful, I know it's a sacrifice, but we just have to get through this surge and get into the new year, and then we'll be on the downslope of this based on projections and based on having a vaccine. But if you are going to gather, it is incredibly important that you limit the number of people you're around now so that you don't bring virus from the grocery store or from hanging out with your other buddies home to your grandmother. It's important that you get tested within uh, three to five days after being around people outside your household without a mask. And when you're doing these gatherings, try to do them inside Hopefully there in Georgia, you'll have a little bit of a warmer um, Christmas this year. Uh, make sure you have plenty of ventilation uh, and go to cdc.gov or you can look up cdc.gov holiday gatherings on Google and, uh, or your favorite search engine. I don't want to favor anyone and get in trouble here, but uh, <laughs> uh, we want people to, do, to, to be safe. And uh, if you can't keep it within your household, then that doesn't mean that you still can't take measures to be safer and uh, go to cdc.gov and have a safe holiday season, everyone. Understand the, the, the finish line's in sight. I'm confident that we can get there and we want as many people to get there as possible so we can have a big Christmas gathering next year. Thank you so much, Surgeon General. We really appreciate it. Wishing you the happiest of holidays and hopefully we'll chat in the new year with some good news about the vaccine moving forward. Be strong, get the facts and get your vaccine like I did. All right, thanks, bye. Bye.